Thank you for joining us. Please consider becoming a member of LMC Media. Classes like this are free for members. Also, if you would consider donating to either the Community Resource Center, the Fuller Center, or the Chamber of Commerce in Mamaroneck. Mamaroneck was greatly affected by the Hurricane Ida, and 150 families are displaced and dozens of homes condemned. Those organizations are spearheading the relief effort for the community. Please consider donating. Welcome everybody to Talking Technophobia and Film. Uh, I'm your host, Professor Movies, and tonight we will be talking about uh, Jim Carrey's least funny film, except for all of the other ones, uh, The Truman Show. Um, <laughs> I, watching it, I, I had this moment where I was like, I don't know what the tone of this movie is, and I don't know if like Jim Carrey's funny at all in it. Like, it, like I found it landing less. Um, than it did years prior. So I'd be interested to hear what you guys think in terms of like, how do we want to classify this movie? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a couple things up on the table, but really we can talk about anything you want. Um, I think there's some things to be said about surveillance and privacy. I think there's some things about you know reality TV and social media uh, that definitely seem relevant uh, even more so now, but also you know in 1998 when we have the film's release. Uh, fun fact, this is not Ed TV, but for a little bit I thought it was Ed TV. Ed TV came out in 1999 and was wildly different, but it was one of those movies like Deep Impact and Armageddon where they kind of blur together for me. Um, so with that said, uh, surveillance, cameras, I don't know. To me, this movie kind of predicted a lot of uh, what we're seeing in terms of like cameras everywhere. I don't know what the statistic is, but something like you can't walk through New York City without being videotaped, like, I don't know, something ridiculous, like two million times or something like that. Um, so I don't know. Uh, open up the floor. What do you guys think about that or the movie in general? Yes, Greg. Start us off, please. Nice and strong. I just thought that the movie, like, it almost in my mind acts like a metaphor for like that. Like Jim Carrey, it's not about him being filmed, but like you're supposed to transpose yourself into that role. Sure. That everybody's constantly under all surveillance. So, like they make it a movie for an interesting, I guess, interesting plot devices, and it's a movie about how watched his life is. Mm -hmm. But you watch, you know, everybody's life is that watched at this point. Uh, certainly with like issues going on, on social media now, where like if you're gonna apply for a job and every single thing you've ever written on social media is now, yeah. it, it could be gone back and reviewed. So uh, that's just like one example, there's dozens. So I, like the movie predicted, not that that would like any one person would be, but the entire society would be that way. Yeah. It's weird like how the the people that are doing the watching in that movie think they're good guys. Sure. Like Ed, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ed Harris's character, Kristoff? Yeah. He like considers this a good thing. Like that, they're trying to help this person, like by monitoring him and making him famous. But in reality, it's actually kind of destroying his life or, or putting him in a prison, basically. Sure. Yeah, a cage. Uh, they say at some point in the film. Which and you, you know, if you talk to the people of like you know who who run Twitter or Facebook, yeah, they think they're doing a service to people. Oh yeah, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's helping us out. He's making our lives better. That was just my infinitely. thought when I. Rewatched the movie. I didn't watch it recently, but I watched it like six times. I've seen it. Yeah, you can ago. you can see that with people who like put themselves into the camera, like people who are TikTok famous, Instagram. I don't know what TikTok is. I don't understand it. That's how I know I'm getting old. Um, but like people, like those people who are famous from the social media platforms. I feel like the difference though is the, the we we choose to like thrust ourselves into the spotlight now or, and insist that every waking moment of our our day, our life is on display. Yeah, there's a different element to it. Now. Yeah. Like, there's a positive choice to do it, but not really. It's kind of like people miss the, the warning of that movie, how, it, how difficult it becomes when yeah, you the, 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 the public and personal. Now, like in the movie, he has no choice. Yeah. But like, most people nowadays don't have a choice. I mean, if you're a young person and you want to talk to anybody else in your class, yeah. you probably have to have a social media account. If you want to get certain jobs you have to have social media accounts if you want to run a business like jamie has that social media account, sure marketing yeah it's simply like a requirement but then then you're pulled into it so. okay but the movie's different in that sense sure yeah but i guess that's just a plot device yeah no yeah i sort of got the impression that 
initially he did not know that he was on camera. Yeah, and then like as the movie goes on, there's this like uh, suspicion that builds. Yeah. Yeah. Because I sort of got the impression that the way I understand the plot, he was adopted by the corporation mm -hmm. and put on TV from being a very small child, like yeah. a baby, and he didn't know until someone told him that you know he was being filmed. Yeah, but and then like 18 years go by and he still like allows himself to stay there, you know, like that ignorance is bliss thing. But no, you're absolutely right. The corporation adopts him. He he's not told what his life is, you know. Um, he's the only element that's real, and there's that unpredictability, I guess, of uh, human nature that you can't control it. It resists it. Oh my God, the product placement. Oh man. Over the top. Laura Linney's character is that who that is? Yeah. Yes. She just turns to the camera. Yeah, his wife. Yeah. Who are you talking to right now? Not the woman he loves. The line at the end that Truman asks, he says, was any of it real? Yeah. And the director says, you were real. Yeah. You're the thing that makes it all And I think that's the difference between the movie and like right now, where it's like, Nothing like when you you put your life on display like and you know it nothing is real at that point like, Everything is an act you can't you forget like what normalcy is um, Because you, you've got to get it right um, But yeah, that's like I don't know do you guys agree like with Ed Harris's uh, Reasoning in the film like is this Truman still real in that sense or it went every, every aspect of his life is trying to be controlled Is he a prisoner? Is does he not is is it a good thing and he's missing the you know the the stardom and all of the the fame he's got I don't know what do you guys think I'm not sure he was ever aware that he was famous by the very end when he's leaving yeah. right you're a TV star everyone's watching yeah say something, say something yeah he's like what yeah <laughs> I'm what <laughs> no and I don't think either that yeah. that's a good life however people dream of it now you know. Well, yeah. Oh no, I'm just um, yeah. And, and certain people, yeah, certain people try to say things like like excuse certain behavior with it's for you know the greater good of this or that or whatever, and just like completely you know they don't they're not view, they're viewing it from their perspective and, and from their perspective you know one it's making the money uh, in some or benefiting them in some way shape or form in yeah. real life. Uh, but it's it's just they they can't they've they've gone down a certain path that's not allowing them to look from other perspectives. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And I had some other general perceptions. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Share with just, us. Just I've got other the, thoughts too. That was like the uh, like the uh, so I'm not a big fan of reality shows. Yeah. No. Me neither. Long. Some people are. Some people are. But I, the, this movie's from 1998, and it showed people like being more invested in his life than their own lives. Sure. Like that was sort of a theme that they didn't explore all the way, but people were more interested in what's happening with him. But they're all just sitting around like on their couches. What about the guy in the bathtub? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. There's right. a guy that just basically his own life is is nothing, and he's watching another guy's life. At one point, he's falling asleep watching it, and yeah, Harris I mean, says people sleep to this. You know, they find it soothing at night. I, I think the plot ends up interrupting some of the like the philosophical thought about whether or not you're being watched is the real issue. Mm -hmm. But that's not interrupted about what it says about people who watch reality show. Yeah. And like invest their thoughts and processes into it. Because those people in the show, they were in they, they were in the the Truman show. They were right. watching the Truman show. But they're in the Truman show the movie, not the Truman show the show. Exactly. Yeah. They were not I in the follow. Truman show the show. Right. And they showed them correctly. Like yeah. they're just watching the show. That's hundred percent true now. Yeah. People that are completely invested in reality shows as if it had anything to do with reality. And they I think don't realize it's produced. And the characters are just paying attention to fake reality. Yeah. At the expense of like living their own. And I think that's a fourth wall moment where like the movie's showing us us, right? It's trying to show us ourselves. It's uh, not a projection of something. It's uh, trying to be that reflection there. And um, that was before you know reality TV became. Yeah. What it is. Now. Yeah, you had like the real world, and that was like it. Road yeah. rules. It was right around the time. What's got famous? That girl with the pitchfork. She was on the farm. 
Hilton? Paris Hilton. Uh, the, Nicole, Nicole Richie. Richie. Yeah, Lionel surreal Richie's life. daughter. Surreal, surreal life. Surreal yeah, I was going to say the simple life, and I knew that simple. wasn't right. Is that surreal life? Surreal yeah. life, yeah. Okay. Court, what were you going to say? No, the Truman Show was just the one reality show that the entire world watched. Yeah. Now there's more shows. Do you remember when Survivor came out? I watched yes. it. Yeah, like I think everyone watched it. <laughs> That's <laughs> all there was. Yeah, there was that like, was it. There was maybe three or four of those kind of shows. Boston Rob from season two. Like, I, like people were invested in that. And I argue that people probably still are invested in reality TV, the lives of celebrities in general. The Bachelor. The Bachelor's still going. All these shows are still going. Yeah. Remember people competed to date Flava Flav? I love that show. <laughs> right? <laughs> Flavor of love? <laughs> Ryan, what were you going to say? Yeah, um, for the uh, the streaming community that I'm like partially invested in, yeah. um, they, uh, streamers sort of bring a certain element of like, you know, themselves into their streams and, and make it a little bit more personal. And uh, streamers have developed this, uh, the I don't know if it was developed by streamers. Sure. But it's uh, a term for people, or for like the kind of relationship that's that develops between someone who is is like it's like a a friendship that isn't. It's like a one-sided friendship. Mm -hmm. uh, parasocial relationships. Parasocial. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, or, um, yeah. And there's there's certain people that get really invested into these parasocial relationships that. Um, that you know, they they spend so much time like you know with uh, with in this one-sided friendship that they kind of lose grasp of reality and like and what's where they are. Okay, yeah, and like I know that authenticity is uh, something we see in the Truman Show with Truman. He's authentic, right? He's being himself. Um, and you see that on like social media. You see that with Twitch streamers or YouTube content creators, like the ones that are popular. People would describe them as like authentic. They're you know being true to themselves. What, 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 is it in the peanut gallery back there? No, ever, anything that's put out there in a video is produced is a version of of something that needs to be portrayed. There is no authenticity when it comes to speaking to the masses. You're trying to bring a message out and you're changing your language, your body, your voice in image in order to do so. Yeah, no, it's like you've read the script. That's where I was going. Um, however, right, I think about Truman and um, his fear of water specifically. And like, that's controlled to such extent that like, it affects his personality, right? All the way later into adult life. You know, they've, they've given him that, you know, I've, I've, I was raised Catholic, that Catholic guilt um, you know, like the mother's like, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't your fault. I never blamed you for your father, you know, and going out on the boat that day. So, like, I wonder even about Truman's own authenticity, right? Like, he's got catchphrases, right? In case I don't see you, have a good evening and good night. Yeah. Um, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Yeah, there's that cheese there. Do we really crave the authentic or do we want the produced? Yeah. Um, Okay. Other thoughts with that, or thoughts in general? Would you recommend this to a friend? Uh, I've heard um, yeah. people who say like, you know, this is one of their favorite movies. Okay. Like, uh, people who are more into uh, film and movies, like, uh, yeah, uh, it's just one so, yeah. thing. So. Okay. Yeah. No. I mean, like, I think it's worth the watch. I don't know if it's groundbreaking. Um, but I definitely think it's it's held up and shows the test of time. Well, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would because I'm not really a big Jim Carrey fan. Yeah, me neither. But Especially got, early Jim Carrey. But I got sucked into the movie. I like the Majestic too, um, where that's another one of his earlier serious roles. Yeah, but I like the guy that directed it because he also did Witness and. It's Dead weird, Poets right? Society. Yeah, yeah, yeah Dead Poets Society. Directed. Witness and Dead Poets. This movie? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Witness is a great movie. Mm -hmm. I love Witness. But there were certain elements between Witness and Dead Poets and this that even if I didn't know this guy directed the, all three of them, I would have suspected it. What do you see the through lines? 
Well, it was more the tone and the attention to detail. Like when Truman was in the travel agency and you looked at all the posters, poster, yeah. posters like the lightning going through the plane. And it was like it was all crafted to make him afraid to travel. Yeah, and actually that scene, I think, really hits the nail on the head in terms of like how I think of the tone of this movie. Yeah. Where it's like, you've got those two layers, right? You've got the foreground and the background. Um, go ahead. Yeah. And it was just something about him. Like you don't normally see that kind of, to that degree of detail in most movies. Yeah. How, how would you guys classify the, the, the genre? Uh, like, is this comedy. dark comedy is what I was thinking as yeah. well. Right. Mild dark what? Mild dark. Comedy. Mild dark. It's, it's no sarcastic. death. It's, it's no death to smoochie. <laughs> it's, not, it's not sarcastic. It's, yeah. It's like, like a comedy. It's sincere. It's a sincere comedy, but like it's not. Yeah. It's not uh, pet detective. It's not pet detective. Which is a but of is that a dark comedy? Pet detective is not a dark. No. Comedy. <laughs> yeah. All right. No. No. I'm saying it's like it, you know, he, Jim Carrey is Jim Carrey in every movie. And sometimes yeah, I like much. movies where Jim Carrey's. Just like to different act. degrees. I like movies no. that don't have any famous actors no. in it because it takes away from the movie. And I think that Jim Carrey toned himself down for this movie to be, he's still Jim Carrey, it still comes through. Sure. So he still kind of has like the comedic face. Yeah, they're the campy not, moments. But he's not like fighting dolphins or, you know, whatever else happens. He wasn't there. as frenetic and hyperactive as he normally was. No, not, 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 not slapsticky either, right? And early Jim Carrey was very slapsticky. Yeah, like Fire Marshal Bill. Yeah. I forget the character of one spit, and I think that was like his first movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Haven't but seen that in a few of years. These movies where he like got serious comedy. Yeah. Like yeah. the one about the Saturday Night Live guy's name is escaping me right now. Oh, oh man. On the moon. Oh, a Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman, and he also did uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Yeah. which was not a comedy so at all. Good. That was not, all right. And that's really where I think he starts to nail it in terms of the dramatic performances. He yes. finds that balance. Right, and this is like a, was this before that, right? This is before that, yeah. So this is like a first foray into... I know he did Man on the Moon after this. Yes. And again, like, I think... I think Eternal Sunshine came out in, like, 2004 or 2005. Sometime yeah. in the early 2000s. Anyone wants to check that, you're more than welcome. Okay. Um, okay, so what else do we have on the old topic list? Um, there's a religious connotation with this film, right? Uh, you know, Kristoff has Christ in his name. Yeah. Interesting enough, there's a man on the moon, and Jim Carrey's next film is Man on the Moon. Um, but does anyone want to weigh in on what the film might be saying uh, about spirituality or, uh, I don't know, religious connotation stuff? You can't play God. Well, I'm sorry, why not? It clearly backfires when you try and control the uncontrollable. That sounds like you're saying this is like Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be happy to, you didn't have to be saying that. Yeah, are, you, are you saying this film's like Frankenstein? Frankenstein? I've ah. never heard that before about any movies ever. Um, no, that's great. Um, you cannot play God, and uh, I think Christoph is kind of presented as this like false god, right? Um, and he's almost uh, Truman is worshipped as like a false idol in a lot of ways. Um, just as celebrities maybe worship today. Yeah. Um, you know, there are plenty of people that dislike celebrities for that very reason. I imagine there were Truman Show haters, though, right? Yeah. Like, oh, that Truman guy, who cares? We're watching him sleep. Yeah. He knows he's on a TV show, I bet. You know, there'd be all the uh, Truman truthers out there. Yeah. There would be now. There would be now, right? Yeah. Well, no, but there was the guy that, you know, parachuted into the street. Yeah. And, uh, Jumped out of the Christmas tree mm -hmm. and got carried away. I did it. You're on a TV show. And then the girl basically tells him. Mm -hmm. And even uh, then, you know, he can't grasp it. There's a little allegory of the cave in there where he's like, he's never known anything else. Yeah. We're going to pause for dramatic effect. <laughs> <laughs> Go say hello. We're very professional here. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I, I, I didn't see too much of the God aspect in it, but I mean, there could be something about predestination in this movie. But Free will versus uh, fate? Yeah, that's like a big thing with Sam Harris. Like, yeah, Ed know. Harris. No. Oh. I'm talking about the philosopher guy. Oh. Talks about Sam Harris. Okay. Kind of argued that you really have no free will in life. Yeah. 
the illusion of free will. Yeah, choice. The illusion of free will because you're really just a summation of all your previous parts. Okay. And so like a lot of the decisions you make are based on what happened to you earlier in your life. So in this movie, like that sort of breaks. Like he he has been predestined and pre ordained to have a certain uh, you know. Like, they, they make him afraid of water so he won't go here. And mm -hmm. it works for yeah. years. But eventually, he still has some sort of internal monologue which breaks him out of it. So... Yeah, you never had a camera in my head, he says at the end. Yeah, so at some point, hey. like, no matter what amount of control is exerted from the outside, mm -hmm. not just control, but, like, just generally environmental conditions that set your predestined life to go forward, you still have an internal monologue that can change it. Mm -hmm. which is what he eventually like and that's what people find triumphant which is why yeah. like those people like to believe they have free will this movie seems to suggest people do mm -hmm. despite as much they can break the cycle they can, they can break some sort of predestination cycle uh, that seems like a big theme in it. and then he, cro he enters the door and it's unknown you know there's we don't know what's what's real life for him you know right it's interesting now I'm going to look up what Sam Harris has to say about this yeah I'd be interested to see. Two security guards in the garage, and at the end, they're like, "What oh, else? Let's just change the channel." Yeah. What else is on? Who's got the Where, TV where's guide? Where's the TV guide? Yeah, yeah. Where's the TV guide? Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, like I, I had that thought. I was like, I'm really happy they've never made a sequel. But I, like, just for the head cannon, it's like, what happened? Where's the Truman Show fanfic? Would it be like a Where Are They Now? Yeah. Special. Mm-hmm. Back, somebody should do that on YouTube. It should have been a, a Blu-ray uh, extra feature or something. <laughs> no, I, I, I just like how quickly it goes to, where's the TV guy? Yep, on to the next thing. You've been watching this for more than 20 years. What do you mean, where's the TV years. guy? 30 years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. And that fickle, yes, that is your viewing audience. Yep, that's us. <laughs> on to the next thing. What else is on? Oh, all right, that was good TV. Yeah. You know, everyone was talking about the Sopranos, and then eventually Game of Thrones, and then on to the next thing, right? Like, we have these things, then they're gone, and then we crave more. The lesson at the end is lost, especially on the two security guards, right? Well, especially on reality TV. Like, yeah? Like, I'll go back and revisit good shows, Yeah. like The Wire. Yeah. I'll watch that four times, start to Sure, yeah, The Wire, definitely. Because it's amazing. I'm really sad about that. However, I feel like we talk about the wire a, a lot too. But Go like, ahead. I, but like a reality show. <laughs> yeah. When that's over. It's over. Yeah, I've never, I'm never, never going back to that. It started in your mind. It was yeah. just like you were passing time. Mm hmm. So. It's that escapism. Because it's escapism. You're not like getting real art from it. Yeah, why are we so fascinated? Is it the like uh, car accident on the side of the road thing where we well, all slow yes. down to see the train wreck? Yes. Uh, we're happy it's not us. Uh, there you uh, go. Which, which. Oh, the Amazing Race. Amazing Race, I remember that the too. Amazing yeah. Race. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Wow, these people I, are crazy. Well, you know? on, on the bright side, I didn't get a chance to do my parody of it. Yeah. Thank God. Well, <laughs> no, no, because I write Christmas pageants. Okay. I was going to do an Amazing, amazing race, race parody. parody in a Christmas pageant, but <laughs> you were? Oh, of course. No, because you've got, I think there's still you've time got the for wise that one. men starting here. And, you, and you've got the shepherds here, and, and, and Mary and Joseph over here, and, and who's going to get to Bethlehem first? <laughs> okay, all right. We, we could actually use that this year. There's still time. Oh, that allows people to socially distance. Yes. There you go. Yes. Just passing each other six feet on the stage. Yeah, Just, yeah, you know. Right. The COVID pageant. <laughs> I also think it's Scooby Doo when they're going through the doors. Um, okay. Um, Keystone Cops to start. <laughs> Do, but, but Scooby the okay, all right, not Scooby. And also, um, Benny Hill kind of had such a thing? Yeah, 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 right? Okay, all right, let's not forget. Um, but uh, I, I lost my thought. <laughs> um, I, th I think it was something about the point and it being lost on people and why we're on to the next one. You in the back with the hat. So you're, saying, you're trying to make this analogy of the the director playing, or someone playing God in a religious context, but I think it really is more not the director itself, but corporation. The fact that a corporation can adopt a human life, be in charge of it, and not, like, how is that okay? Yeah. And you see without through the movie. Mm -hmm. Without you see, responsibility. We see through the film, you know, that all the, the sponsorships and, and trying to push this agenda, 
And then you also see that there's like a very small group that are activists that are yeah. like, no, you have to free this guy. Where I come from, they call that slavery. Yes. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So it's like, I think that's the overall thing where no one cares about that. It's not even registering that this was a human life that has no control over their existence whatsoever. They're being manipulated so hard by a corporation. So how does that carry over? Thoughts? Into real life? Into real life, yeah. Could we see this kind of thing happening? Has it happened already? Happened? Corporations owning people? They don't own people. Well, I mean, yeah, we'll use it loosely. Go ahead. Well, they, they, they heavily, like, I mean, there are shows that are just horribly exploitative that are their shows and they basically like they take people who have no money yeah. and give them just enough money to survive to put them in shows where they will intentionally be embarrassed and that is like make the them afraid for a whole. right <laughs> naked and afraid like here take somebody who has no money and give them twenty thousand dollars and be like if you do the if you jump to these hoops like we'll put you on television like i mean no they're not owned by the corporation right. But there's almost, like at least in this room, the corporation was like, I mean, it's slavery technically. I mean, wasn't more than, yeah, more than, more than technically, technically, literally. But at the same time, they kept all this money and they made them rich. It's the opposite of what they do on reality television now, which is basically exploit these people and throw them out the door. And then uh -huh. they end up with no money and they're broke. But so. removing the reality TV part of yeah, it. Yeah, outside of reality TV, because we're not are, reality are TV stars, listen. some of us. Yeah. 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 How are <laughs> How our phones listen to us, right? That's a corporation that's decided to, to do this and then control what we see through this device, what we see when we go through our social media. That is like the influence of Truman surrounded by all these product right. placements in yeah. his life. So, so we're there, yeah. No, no, but it's but Amazon it's okay. Alexa. But it's uh -huh. okay because we're monetizing our product and, and our stockholders said it was okay. Right. Well, yes, the only functional difference money. between the movie and that. But are we the product, the though? Movie, of course we are. Yeah. yeah, we're definitely the we're product. The product. We're, the, we're the product. Just as much as Truman is, is, yeah. Is that we buy iPhones. All right. Truman didn't buy anything. Truman, Truman. Well, he has that molar in the captured at a young age and right. put in a jail, essentially. <laughs> so, like, yeah. you, we're functionally in that position with social media. Uh huh. Now, is it anybody in this room who doesn't have a smartphone in their pocket or maybe? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wish I was still alive. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's got us all. Everybody has one. So everybody's chosen to do it. So we do have a camera like on us at all times. It's, it's 5G. We are, the 5G. Guy, okay. we are the guy in the bathtub, too. And we're the guy in the bathtub? Yes. How do you guys feel about that? She's saying you're the guy in the bathtub. I just think the movie was I just great. hope that TV was far enough from the water. Yeah, right? I, there's a part of me that was expecting something tragic to happen. It just made a cool plot. Yeah. It was interesting and a well done movie. Yeah. That covered and touched on but didn't eliminate any philosophical issues. It's just sure. like, hey, these are all issues you should probably deal with. Yeah, it poses the question. It, it doesn't the give the answer. I don't think it gives you its solutions. Right. It doesn't tell you who's right or wrong at the end of the movie. It doesn't tell you if you're the bad guy for watching this mm -hmm. or not the bad guy for not watching it. Or, but, I mean, everybody seems like a like a redeemable character at some point. Even Kristoff somehow comes off redeemable at this. Like, yeah. he doesn't seem like he's like, hey, when I get out of here, I'm going to put you in jail for imprisoning me. Sure. They sort of have like a weird talky relationship at the end of this movie. Yeah. And so everybody's absolved in this movie. So the movie itself, I think, was just an interesting, like, thought experiment. Thought experiment. Yeah. That, exactly. That, like, gave everybody the right to think about five different topics, mm -hmm. but didn't actually, like, tell you which side you should follow, which is great. Mm -hmm. the yeah, are yeah and the best art is going to well, do that. It's not preachy. It's exactly. Yeah, even it's from reflective, an you know. Economic point of view, yeah. they built basically a small country and provided employment for all like forty thousand people worked yeah. on the Truman Show. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so that's a case. That's a case for that. It, it reminds me of like. It could be speaking from space. But it reminds me like when I went to Aruba and I was like, "Where's the Arubian culture?" And the Arubians were like, uh, "There's McDonald's and there's this," and it wasn't there. It's like, "Are you happy with this?" And they were like, "Well, we all have jobs." You know, so it's just like they're, you're slow, slowly selling your soul. Mm -hmm. But we can feed our families, which is our most immediate need. Well, it's, it's, it's the East Coast me megalopolis that, you know, where you get a Dunkin' Donuts, you get a Kentucky Fried Chicken, you get a McDonald's. Uh, you may or may not get uh, ooh, a Waffle House. Waffle House. Waffle but, House, yeah. It hasn't migrated here. Not yet. It's coming, though. It's creeping up. I drove to Florida. Here, though, so don't, they don't really need Waffle House right. up here. IHOP is actually better, trust me. Do you work for IHOP? 
No. Okay. <laughs> but you, you, yeah, you wouldn't be opposed. <laughs> it's delicious. I've eaten at Waffle House and there. You don't want to do that. I, did th I do think we're doing a lot of product placement tonight, which is, which is fitting. Um, did you, you, yes? No, I had a point, but it lost it. You guys are sidetracking really hard with your product placement. Why, yes, Just yes, like in the movie. Sorry. <laughs> Just like in the movie. Yeah, it was, a, it was about like how tr Truman didn't sign up for it. He was chosen. Um, and would his life would have been, would it have been better or worse if the corporation had it and adopted him? Because he was a forfeited baby, right? Yeah. He was chosen because he was, just happened to be born at the right time. Okay. You know, so well, actually faster than the other four. Yeah, yeah he was premature, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't wait to get started, they said. Yep. So it's like, what, what is it to say or stop any corporation from actually doing something like this? Would you be up in war if you knew Truman, if Truman Show was on TV right now and you were watching? Would you be upset about it or would you be complacent like the bathtub guy? Well, I think Free Britney has taught us that we aren't complacent, right? The, the people eventually will rally and raise the ruckus and you yeah, know no, nobody ever went with a gun to freer that they is just, true they just put a hashtag out that's true but no, nobody actually freed britney this what do you think that she's um basically in jail the lauren in slash what was her other name sheila. in the movie it wasn't sheila sophia sylvia? sylvia thank you that character right she's not i mean there i imagine that free truman thing isn't doing violent means either um, because I guess, like legally, right? Like everything's on the up and up somehow. Most, most people won't fight the government if the government allows them to happen. Yeah, w what is the solution? The movie isn't going to tell us it, but I mean, no, is free true. Britney the way to go? Is because uh, we're there, right? We've established we're there. So what do we do about it, right? This, we're there, and ethically, this is messed up, and our smartphones are listening to us, and uh, yeah, people are prostituting themselves on the internet. And we're all going to get ads for the Truman Show. I know yeah. it's great. Which is great. Or Jim Carrey related things. You don't know. We've said his name a lot too. Yeah, I actually brought up Pet Detective last night. <laughs> I was trying to That's how it works. I was trying to explain Scott Norwood to Noah. You were all going to watch Pet Detective tonight no, no, because no, of how no, the. No, I, I, I want. Be strong. I want a groundswell for Let Me Sneak Into. Okay. Oh, they made the series with um, Neil Patrick Harris, right? No, no. I had seen some of it. I, the movie was good. Okay. All right. I, I, is he retired like from movie film. making, by the way? Who? What's the last thing Jim Carrey was in? He was in that TV show. Oh, movie making. So I don't know what his last film was, but he was uh, in the TV show where he was like a dark comedy Mr. Rogers kind of thing. It's still on. It's on Showtime. It's on Showtime. We're going to not plug it because we've been plugging too much already. <laughs> he wrote a book. Jim Carrey wrote a book? He does a lot of art now. Oh, yeah. that's great. Well, he, I'm glad. I'm really happy for him. Right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does seem like his personality when I see it. Okay. Right. You no, know, it's, it's the beard once it gets me on the reasonable length. Yeah. Has he ever done any interviews about this movie, about how it's affected his own life? I mean, Jim Carrey was... He did have that turn, right? Where, like, all of a sudden he became very outspoken. Like, none of this matters. None of this, this is all yeah, a show. I mean, he, I mean, his life... He became like, grim, Carrey. He got very spotlighted at one point and became, like, a super high-paid actor. Yeah. Like, everybody was staring at him. And then he made this movie. I'm wondering if the movie itself had an impact on his own life. I don't know if he's ever given an interview. Yeah, perhaps. perhaps. That's worth looking into. I have it's not either that or the second well to find that. Or the second A says he was burped by the elephant. So I, I, I would let that turn. <laughs> yeah, that would, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather the for the former than the latter. Yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's bring this full circle then. Um, society seems like it's in a dark place. Uh, seems like the Truman Show has kind of um, become a reality in terms of both reality TV, but also just the way we interact with each other and run our own lives. Um, there's, there's this message here about not playing God. Once again, you know, Monsters and Mad Men has been our overarching theme. Um, and we, we don't have solutions for this yet again. But I, I'm confident that we will someday figure it out. Well, yes? Wasn't it like the sleeper must awaken? Did you just quote Dune? Yes. We quote Dune a lot on this, too. Yeah, go ahead. What does <laughs> that mean? That's the solution. Oh, it's it's like, as soon as Jim Carrey's character became aware, he fought it, he, and he fought yeah. his way out of it. So it's, we're sleeping, we're in the bathtub, we have to all become aware. We've got to wake that's up. that's the solution. Okay. But, if you watch The Matrix, some people it's, prefer... I was, I was going go, there. ...prefer to go back into it, and it, when they realize how difficult the real world is, 
it's a lot easier to watch reality television. Yeah. So like some people choose to eat the steak instead of eat the gruel, like that guy did in the Matrix, and then he just Cipher. Like, he's like, yeah, Cipher figured out that like, oh, I, I am out of the I'm out of the Matrix, but I don't like it. I'm just going to go back in. So do you think we're inevitably always going to have a dual society of the sleepers and the awake? Yes. The, those yes. who are awake. I do think that. <laughs> I think there's a huge incentive. Well, like we yeah, got, we have woke culture, yeah, right? It's like there's a pull because, but isn't there like yeah. also a pull because there's always someone trying to control the sleepers? So it's like, how do you balance that part of it? Well, it depends on who you think the sleeper is. And who's the they, <laughs> you know? But. There's, there's very little revolution if you don't know who to revolt against. Well, I got this Yeah, if also, you. In, in the real world, I'm sure. World, I'm sure that like a lot of the, 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 the a lot of the I was about to say that, but the people I didn't who are like out. them, the people who are behind it, yeah. are also in with the mix of people. Like, sure. There's no, there's no like god characters like there are in the Matrix. With sure. The the agents or whatever. You know, it's just everyone's a part of the the, the uh, either the sleepers or the like. No, and I, I, you know, I joked earlier. This I confuse this with Ed TV, but like, what this made me go watch immediately afterwards was The Matrix. This movie, um, The Matrix came out the year later, um, and I think that there we see like cyclically, but also in clusters, um, the same message kind of getting shown to us again and again. Um, and I think that's worth trying to pay attention to because we're obviously all awo awoke. But you know, there's a lot of sleepers out there, and um, we've got to tell them to put down the phones and turn off the TV and do something about it. Yeah. Yeah, but do you really feel like we are awake just because we're able to talk about it? We're still not acting. I will throw my phone in the garbage right now. <laughs> tell me I won't. But that's what I mean. It's like our <laughs> It costs a thousand dollars. Like, uh, it's just a thing. It's just a thought. It's just a thing. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, uh, truly, made a are we really, I, or we think we're out of the wheel, but we're still very much in that wheel. We're well, still very much... Outside of every system control is another like, system of control. Well, there's there's levels of it, right? So, like, what do they always say with, like, alcoholics? The, the first thing to recognize is that you have a problem. Sure. So, like... That's self-awareness? Self-awareness is the first step to right. getting out of the box. We're so far from that in so many places. Even if you have, yeah. even if you have Knowing you're in the box. box or broken out of the box or throwing your phone off, I mean... All right. Like, Go ahead. At the very least, like you, you're aware that it's doing something to you. Right? Sure. And yeah. there's a good portion of people in the world who aren't. Right. And so maybe that's the first step is waking up to the fact that yeah, it's affecting you. Which is weird because in this movie, he like, I don't know, it, it shows phases of like. Yeah. Slow it took him a long time. It took him a very long time <laughs> to break him. out of like the control scenario. Like what? Tw how many years? At 30, 30 years. you know, but from high school to when he was 30, you know, because by that point he should have been like, this is weird, and started of like paying attention to all of the strange but things that kept happening. You know, how do you know it's strange? Well, I mean, right. the, 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 it's, yeah, the it's movie, fair. The movie over dramatized. Sure. They created a scenario where it was impossible for him. It's non diegetic sound. He can't hear the music swell. It's just us. You're right. Okay. Uh, and awesome. It it's, it's, in just one spot. Oh, one that was, oh right. Yeah. Oh. Where the spotlight is, of course. Right? right. Right over him. Just made me think of Charlie Brown with a black cloud over his head. And I don't know my... I don't know Daisy May and the crew well enough to know Little Abner. Little Abner yeah, me neither. The original one that had the cloud only over him. Okay. I was thinking Looney Tunes, but maybe yeah, no, it was no, something no, this else. Goes, this goes back to Before, the, yeah. Little Abner. No. Well, you know, my, my concern is that while we are all there running on the wheel, I always worry most about those where the sound effect really is. Top. Mm -hmm. Top. Top. Sure. Because they stopped running and. Top. Yep. I threw my phone away. I have no idea what time it is now. So that's the that's the so one there. drawback of it. Uh, All right. Yeah. Uh, someone I forget who said that the levels of like going back to uh, like the the reference alcoholics, like the levels of skill being um, uh, the first one being conscious incompetence, uh, conscious competence, mm -hmm. unconscious, uh, no, conscious com uh, conscious competence, mm -hmm. and then unconscious competence. 
Okay. So you're so good at some point that you, yeah. You don't even have to think about you it. Can it's do muscle it in memory. Your sleep, as yeah. it were. And sometimes you do. So that, that would end up being, of course, those people that can read a spreadsheet, mm -hmm. those people that can enter into a spreadsheet, those people that can actually write a formula, yeah. and those people that can write macros. No, it's a good way of thinking about it, right? Because like we all have that with different levels of um, yes, competency. The rest of us call them users. Users, yeah. I was going to yes. say the user level. <laughs> users being, and they're getting used. Maybe not by Google, though. You know, Google, Google Sheets, they're, they're, they're on the up and up. Very, very good. What's that? Tell me. Like the actors in the show. Yeah. Not him and not the controllers or producers. But, like, what was the role of the actors in the show? I mean, these people, like, basically spent their entire lives at some portion, like, 16 hours a day, mm -hmm. just being or more. And I guess they could run away to sleep. I mean, I. If you're in a show for 30 years, yeah, they don't have lives. You know, you've no got very little personal life. And they they or not trapped. They volunteered. To yeah, they competed show. probably to get into it. You know, right? But it was you know, 30 years of steady employment. Yeah, it's 30 years of steady employment, but they have no ability. To spend you could probably like swap the kids out early on, and you know, well, it's like recast it's them. Like being in the army or navy, like yeah, you're paid, but you're in the middle of the battle. You can't spend the money. Yeah, yeah. you get paid to be there, but they're in it for 30 years. So like, look, like I. Like, I, I, it's a weird topic, like, I mean, who, who chose to be in that show? I mean, they never really covered, like, you know, do actors go in and out, somebody retires, mm -hmm. some of the actors die, how do they replace the actors, do they have to build it in a script? Sure, yeah. There's a lot that went into that plot, but, like, it never really, when you think about it, like, who were the stupid people that acted in the show? Yeah. I mean, they were just as complicit as the, the top guys. Absolutely, right? Um, but they were just, you know, following the script, they were just following orders. Yes? This room, that reminded me of Schenectady, New York. Yeah. And I don't know if anyone has ever seen Schenectady, yeah. I have. New York. Oh, I don't. Uh, I've driven through it on But that's way. the thing, is like there was no <laughs> stopping to the no. cycle. Synecdoche. Schenectady. Schenectady. No, yeah. Synecdoche. Synecdoche. Synecdoche? Synecdoche. No, I know. Oh, whatever that <laughs> I'm movie. sorry, a little to the left of Albany. Yeah. <laughs> Schenectady. But yeah. it was like. So, it was, yeah, Schenectady is the town. It was a te like a terrible cycle that never ended and never, and never stopped. Yeah, and these guys actors playing actors James playing actors for 30 years because that's how long it took Truman to find out. They yeah, could've they would have done it forever. They've been in there forever. They're planning a spinoff, right? You know, yeah, with Truman's kid. Hired Laura Liddy when she was a kid. Yeah, mm -hmm. or at least high school. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And then the mom, like, I think that like the mom felt like Truman was her son, and she had to. She she pretty much did have to yeah. raise him. Uh, the Method threat, acting. You know, and, and, and what do we call it? Ed Harris watching him the whole time and predicting movements as a director. You have to, like, know and predict this and know where to go to. Mm -hmm. Being so close. So, yeah, it's really creepy. Mm -hmm. And, like, Jim Carrey's character, I mean, no idea of any of that. Let's rank our Mad Men from the season so far. We've got uh, Henry Frankenstein, because that's his name in the movie. Um, Seth Brundle. Mm -hmm. yes. And Kristoff. Just one word. Uh, so, like, I don't know, is any of them morally superior, a better father figure? Um, how would you rank them? In, in terms of who's the worst? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, in terms of, like, who's the worst? I'm most embodied. Worst father, okay. worst creator, worst madman. Yeah, I don't know. I've got to give Kristoff some props because once he backed himself into the corner saying, well, he can break out any time he wants mm -hmm. to. He just needs the will. Mm -hmm. actually let him. Yeah. And then he, he does, at the, he does see that he's willing to die for this, and he, all right, that's enough. I mean, you got to give him some props for I mean, that. Yeah. The guy in The Fly, like, just fell into it because he got mutated by a fly. Like, he became a bad guy after the mutation. Yeah, but he wasn't really acting ethically from the beginning, well, so... Well, he did, he did, like, transport that monkey and turn it inside out. That Killed that monkey. He, he was sorry. He, what? Frankenstein robbed graves. Mm -hmm. But Frankenstein's also a bad father. He, you know, made that creation and then like totally abandoned it as soon as the, you know, the going got tough. The worst. He tried one time. You know, look the sunlight. Oh yeah, no. Christoph actually, it was thirty years of trying. He right? Loved him. Yeah, I think he on some him. twisted level he loved him. Like yeah. I said, like there was no negative character in this movie. Like everybody genuinely was thought they were a good person. 
like you become a bad character when you know you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. Like at some point you have self-recognition that you're the bad guy, but you keep doing it anyway. Are we but the in baddies? This movie, none of the characters had self-recognition that they were the bad guy. They all thought they were the good guy. Yeah. They might not have been, and they probably all had their flaws. But in Frankenstein, I mean, he was a bad guy. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but Frankenstein didn't think he was a bad guy. He didn't think he was a bad guy, but he should have known better when he just like let this thing. So how is it different from the director of the corporations? How are they not bad guys in this? Well, I, because their stockholders said they were good. That's what I'm saying. It's bullshit. That's bullshit. Well, all right. So, I think there's more ego and vanity going into Kristoff than um, than Frankenstein somehow, right? Because like all of these people, like Seth included, they they they're they're chasing after greatness. They want to change the world. They want to do something. But at least uh, our our first two mad scientists, if we're going to call them that. Uh, they're doing it for some kind of also beneficial um, in terms of medicine or science, right? He's trying to conquer death. He's trying to create, uh, you know, faster transportation, you know, to help people who, you know, you know, have motion sickness and other stuff. But we're um, trying to give this orphan a better life. You don't is that it? Yeah? yeah? Okay. No, because I struggle to find the, the redeeming out. thing. I, I, look, I, there is no. There you is can no paint it any way you want. So is Kristoff the worst then? It, it just goes really thin. It's this would be worst. like, okay, so young Frankenstein, when he puts the monster on display and he does the putting on the Ritz, right? <laughs> that, like, that's kind of what Kristoff does with Truman. Yeah. Uh, okay. Maybe? Yeah. I, don't, I see okay. that. Kristoff <laughs> has no regard for the humanity of Truman. Yeah. It's like, all, uh, as, as, as like whereas Froderick does. As like a self, uh, what's it called, like a self-aware being. Okay. But, he treats him like as if he never grew up. Yeah. Like still a child. Maybe what if arrested let, development. Let, let's say there's a child and it has nowhere to go and it's going to starve to death, and a corporation yes. adopts it, gives yes. it food and shelter. Okay, that's better than it being dead. Yeah, absolutely. So, but I don't think Kristoff ever moved past that and was like, okay, but it's a human, so it has to go. And so, like, he kept taking care of it like a kid until it was thirty because he was making money off of it and he was delusional. Mm -hmm. So he's a bad guy. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah he because he it's not like anything. they had this baby and said, you know what would be great? Yeah. It said, oh, look, we have this whole setup. Let's find the baby and put it in it. Yeah, it could have been anyone. It would have yeah. been anyone. It just happened to be him. It was that luck. Because he was born first. Yeah, yeah, born first. <laughs> Thoughts? I'm not not to put you on the spot. No, 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 you're totally fine because okay. I was having thoughts. Yeah, and usually. I I don't know where this conversation started. I did just walk in. But I was thinking at the end of this movie that I would really love to see the Truman Show 2. Yeah. <laughs> I think we started off. We did. We did. We, we did touch off. upon it. But go ahead. Tell me why. Great. Like, where um, are they Because now? Truman really, truly needs to sue everybody from the network. It's just him going around <laughs> suing people. Yeah. Oh, my God. For all that they're worth, it was so wrong and illegal what... Stuff did. Thank you, Jamie gets it. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, does, I'm sorry, time out. Does, does, does anybody, ever, anyone I'm, on the I'm side of the guy. corporation? I am not the bad guy. <laughs> I, I just want to throw out the word human trafficking. Uh, we called it slavery where I come from. Sure, but it was he, just poor, first of all, who let a network adopt, adopt a child? A child. They, settled, they settled this in the beginning of the movie with a voiceover, right? Yeah, they did. They're like, because of some certain situation, this was allowed to happen. But corporations are viewed in this country as people, right? Like, well, for oh, purposes of free speech. Oh, yeah, you could tell us on that. For the purposes of free speech, a corporation has the same rights as its shareholders for free speech. Okay. So it's passed through. It's passed through. But they can't adopt people yet. No, no. You, corporations yet. cannot adopt people. People can adopt That's people. Why this is the reason corporations have free speech Not rights yet. is because the owners of the companies have free speech rights. They don't lose them when they organize themselves as a corporation. And okay. This is also so they can organize that was very informative. Packs and but I mean, in the movie, I think this, they voice over this. From they do, the in the very beginning. beginning. They're like, and uh, because of something, uh, corporations will all adopt people. Which means, at least at some level, there was an acknowledgement in the movie that everybody on the in the entire United States accepted that as a principle. Yeah. I mean, if the, except right, for the activists, the, except for the few activists, yeah, well, I mean, the red pill. I say accepted, I mean accepted by enough of a majority that it happened. So, like, I guess at some level, the Supreme Court decided that in this at in this level, world, money changed hands. Some mm -hmm. money changed hands. Mm -hmm. and they're like, uh, corporations can adopt people. Now, I don't know why. I forget what they said. I, they I don't. They don't. I don't think they give a nice money. Yeah, this is, I see a lot of parallels between them. You you want to elaborate? 
Oh, Idiocracy is a good one. Wait, did we decide that? No. Did, we? <laughs> did we? I was just making a parallel. Oh, okay, I got you. I thought we were segueing. No, I felt like no, in... No, we product placing. We'll get, we, we've done a lot of product placement. Yeah, there was product placement in Idiocracy. Okay. I haven't seen it. I've ended this. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's it's disturbing. It's, it's seeable. We don't have to... Brondo. 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 It's got electrolytes. It's what plants crave. Well, we can't do idiocracy now. We've already talked too much about it. Um, so that makes that choice it, easier. It can wait a little yeah, we, we can put that on the back burner for a second. Uh, final thoughts? Final thoughts. On the train. Trying to get this train into the station. Yes. Oh, that's a neat one. <laughs> final thoughts. No, I was going to end up with the, the know, uh, having to either recant or let him go. So <laughs> that was going to be the end. Okay. Sorry. No. Oh. Uh, more along the lines of like um, the good guy or the bad guy thing. Like all of the yeah, and all, uh, all of the people watching, supporting him to like you know betting on him to get out in the bar. Or mm -hmm. Like and the people who cheered when he left. Like are they good? No, like. I, I can't imagine a world where I, am, like, I being Truman, uh, like those people right. or, or care any uh, yeah. for those people. Yeah, and think about how he would react to yeah. learning, you know, how how people just watched, yeah. you know, and did nothing. Love any sheep. That's got to okay. be, yeah. yeah, that would have to be the most depressing thing I could ever imagine, like, and you let me yeah. suffer! Yeah. Wait, what's that quote from, from, um, Boondock Saints? It's the the righteous man, the man who is the very beginning of the movie. The priest is. Uh, there's two types of people: the person who does evil and the person who sees evil being done and does nothing to stop it. And the second is the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, I so agree. That's exactly oh, what, what Ryan's saying. Yeah. What? And he did bring this up at the end of the movie because we're watching Truman have his great escape, and everybody starts cheering, and then you see the two men that are in the security booth, and like. Yep. Two minutes later, they're like, "All right, let's put something else on." Like they didn't even care that it happened, and that's and that's the that's I think the 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 trouble with the technology in that film is that these people grew up for you know ten thousand days or or whatever in, in the situation where they're watching this uh, poor poor child who was trafficked into uh, in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. At grow up on television, and, and it's so wrong that he was manipulated in so many ways. They don't even care. And as soon as these two men said that, I, I was like, that literally is what happens today. You know, with the with with any the, show. The, the, well, the culture on 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 social media of sharing <laughs> of sharing the most uh, pressing issue of the day. And, and it could be something else in three days, and we don't even hear about the other thing. And it, it was, you know, it was interesting. I, I don't remember when this movie was released. But 98. So now here we are 22 years later, yeah. and that's literally not any different from what we experience right. in real life. Now. Very we're, true. We're there. We're, we're no longer trending. I'm sorry. No. No. Okay, well, thank you all for uh, sharing your ideas. I, I feel like, uh, despite our product placement and our, and our sidetracks, I think uh, I've, I've learned a lot uh, about our views, and um, I'm, I'm frightened even more than I was before, <laughs> because it really seems like time and time again, uh, films are trying to show us ourselves and uh, the things that, the things that, yeah. So for, for all of our sakes, please, please start listening. Uh, this has been Talking Technophobia. I'm Professor Movies. Uh, in December, we're going to watch Wally. -E. Woo! Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next time. Thank you, Jamie, for letting us use MAID. Um, yes. oh, it's a great place. Product placement. Product placement, one last one.